Third, how the state communicates with the society, where we are moving uh, in the area of communications, how it is going to ch change, what is in store to all of us in the 21st century. Just a brief uh, introduction. We have a brief uh, presentation. It's uh, been done by Deloitte in 2021. And here is an interesting uh, picture, the dynamics of media consumption uh, in the Russian market we see a radical uh, difference uh, between the younger and uh, um, other types of audiences. Uh, 30 percent of uh, respondents between 14 and 29 uh, uh, trust the social media, uh, whereas other respondents uh, trust more television. So this uh, discrepancy in media consumption in the modern world dictates new uh, rules of the game to communicators so we could reach uh, different audiences. In uh, the 80s, uh, there were only traditional uh, means of uh, information media. Uh, but right now, this task becomes much harder. In 2021, uh, the Russian citizens uh, showed inter uh, growing interest in uh, social media, especially YouTube and Instagram. So on the next slide, you can see this radical change uh, in the increase in the subscribers to Telegram Messenger. And another important point is that uh, this year, uh, last year, uh, 2021, social media uh, accounted for 90 percent of all respondents. So 90 percent of them used uh, last year on the whole the uh, social media interaction is one of the most uh, <clears throat> widespread means of uh, communicating with internet in 2021. Uh, mobile internet has been used uh, by 53 percent of users. 2017, it was only 31 percent. So you see a radical growth over the four-year period. And of course, the pandemic was a, a powerful driver of this process uh, that uh, flared up. This process, we all, all of us prefer uh, smartphones and online interaction, while the traditional information media continued to be an important important source of news. So that's what we're going to discuss today with our uh, honored uh, speakers. Uh, Steve speaks Larissa Katasheva, director of the Center for Communication of RANIPA. Uh, Evgeny Zhonov, uh, head of the Analytical Center, uh, Scientific Education and Politics. Mikhail Shomakov, deputy Dir general director, ANO National Priorities. And Vladimir Tamak will join us a bit later, later from ANO, ANO Dialogues. First question is to Mikhail Shumakov. Uh, the uh, company National Priorities is a serious organization in the area of communications. Uh, I think the national project is one of the key subjects uh, in recent years. And uh, indeed, this is, uh, implies a reform in the country of fundamental industries uh, ranging from transport to education to medicine and so on and so forth. So it's, uh, you can hardly imagine that uh, people uh, will not get information uh, about uh, national uh, projects. So that, that's the primary goal of this um, uh, company. That, uh, but the key challenge is that this entire society should be aware of that, as we can see from the uh, presentation. In our time, the society uses different channels of communication. So uh, the question is how you build your uh, communication strategies in your work and which channels of communication should be used by uh, the state to uh, interact uh, with different audiences and how you can tune up communications for uh, different types of audiences. Five minutes for each speaker, please. Uh, good afternoon, dear colleagues, and thanks for your introduction. Our organization is relatively young, as uh, we've been uh, working only for about two years, slightly over two years. Nevertheless, we are quite uh, uh, noticeable uh, on the market. Uh, some national projects uh, 
uh, were launched uh, before that, so we can talk about these national projects, the communication strategy that we have chosen for that. Uh, uh, is designed not to tell people on the whole about what's going on, because it, it's a gigantic state public uh, program, but just to answer a specific question, how uh, the life lives of people will change and is changing already now. What happens here and uh, now, now talking about the three pillars on which the strategy is based and the different channels, well, of course, it depends, first of all, on the communication channel. What I mean is the format of uh, mm, uh, consumption of uh, data consumption, the co content quality, number two, and uh, probably the most important component, uh, probably the most important component in the struggle for the audiences and the usefulness of this content in this, at a specific point in time. So from this uh, vantage point, uh, we are not uh, dividing this, uh, let's stop saying traditional or non-traditional uh, mass media, I think they are, are intertwined. They have been interconnected since uh, time immemorial. So there are technologies that have penetrated all media. Uh, the technologies that connect uh, them uh, all together. We can see this in Internet. Internet is not just one of the channels, uh, additional channels. It's a kind of a media environment with a diversity of channels that are competing against each other. Is when we choose one channel or the other, we rely on these uh, three pillars and uh, on uh, specific opportunities as we uh, need to uh, build in this information into the uh, audiences. And uh, of course, special attention should be paid to the quality of content. Because everyone is uh, dealing with content, officially or non unofficially. And, but people have become sort of really choosy and uh, whether to follow a certain content or not uh, should be uh, to their liking. And we see uh, good content uh, that has been adapted uh, for uh, television or uh, if it has not been um, adapted for online media, it's still you know, sometimes it fails to reach the audiences, but uh, the situation uh, and quality uh, is of key importance. I think, I think these are probably the basic things that we've just uh, underlined and uh, regarding the usefulness of content. We, we do have a lot of content bombarding us uh, from all sides, uh, so sometimes uh, we experience this unnecessary information noise. But today's session, for example, here is uh, broadcast not only on uh, the uh, Gaida Forum uh, website, but also on the national policy website. So that's precisely talking about the modern technologies and communication media. The telegram has grown 11 percentage point uh, last year, when in fact this is a, an impressive figure. No other messengers of social media have grown in similar proportions. In Russia, Telegram is a kind of a unique resource where people just consume, uh, use the serious content, uh, news content. And of course, I would like to ask Evgeny Zhonov how did you manage to make this so interesting, this channel? And also would like to understand the modern trends. Uh, the government has entered the telegram. Almost half of the federal ministries have also started using telegram. Is it a kind of a light trend, just uh, an attempt to keep up with the audiences? Or is it a serious channel of communication that's going to stay with us for a long time? I just wanted to uh, say that uh, whether it's uh, this uh, telegram grows will keep pace uh, further on down the line. So what do you think uh, whether this reserve is still relevant? 
In your nice diagram, you noted two trends, uh, what uh, the growth of Telegram and TikTok. I think these two media correlate with each other in our world, not only in communication sphere, but also in education. These short-lived uh, brick formats are getting more popularity. This is a global trend, in fact. And in fact, uh, in TikTok, uh, which are, is used by young uh, guys, they don't need longer formats. And the same applies to Telegram. We've talked about this already. I have a hobby. At every forum uh, where leaders uh, get together, I come to my colleagues I ask, asking them, do you still use Telegram as a key source of uh, news? And uh, colleagues, almost everyone, with some exceptions, uh, yes, we do use it uh, and more and more uh, increasingly use Telegram. We are a country of talking. It's about talking all the time. It used to be smoking rooms, clubs, uh, the country of Soviets. Uh, that's what Telegram is about. Even our musical culture, which is criticized in the West, that songs is about music, but text in our country is more important, lyrics. So that's how historically Telegram has become a venue for debate, for thinking people, for, for, for the people who like to think and analyze uh, and who uh, want more than facts. Guide our forum that is taking place right now. What people have said, what they had in mind. This telegram, uh, dozens of different posts, including analytical, our colleagues from traditional media. Well, probably there will be some analysis, analytics towards the evening. But uh, answering the just uh, the first part of your question, I believe that any content which um, is um, it's not about the new media such as Telegram, but on other ven venues, other channels should be done honestly. Um, I know some colleagues in Telegram who work uh, 9 to 6 p.m. Uh, well, of course, and, and they sometimes they work in, in on a weekend and the holidays, and you know, when a new subscriber comes to you, you know this quite well, uh, when a new subscriber joins, uh, they, ha uh, they must love him. It's, it's, a, it's a kind of um, uh, loudspeaker um, uh, facility uh, during a meeting. You know, our channel, we use uh, scientific and educational uh, sections uh, with uh, uh, civil servants, uh, teachers, uh, you know, people from other sectors who participate there. But we must understand that these are people who do not have much time watching TV. Sometimes they have only 10 seconds to briefly browse through the information on Telegram. But of course, in this historical period, I don't know how long it's going to take, but possibly, you know, it's most likely that something will come in place of Telegram, but this uh, debate, discussion format will stay on. And of course, some people will probably go to some other channels. So how we can make it more interesting, you know? Well, we'll try to get uh, together a team of true professionals who know this uh, from within. Thank you, René. So Vladimir Tabak is joining us uh, now. Please take your seat uh, and this chair. Now let me ask you a question. The Clubhouse, why Clubhouse has failed? Last year, uh, everybody downloaded Clubhouse, tried them, but um, uh, in one month uh, it was it was just a flop. Uh, so let me cite one of the uh, reasons. I think there are several reasons. What is the strength of Telegram? The Telegram is uh, first of all there's a kind of uh, order of um, an uh, anonymous. Uh, usage, although Telegram is not anonymous, of course, but it's a seeming uh, chance to say something without censorship, as it is uh, the way you think. 
So that was really important at the first stage of Telegram uh, existence. Uh, and now we see that uh, ever more people, journalists, politicians, civil servants join Telegram right now. So I think Clubhouse uh, was uh, quite, uh, you know, a successful entry uh, because there were many people with uh, uh, their own channels uh, who wanted to say something under their own name, but the discussion never uh, went uh, along because in my sphere in science education, many colleagues, what they uh, could not uh, write in text, they could not say. It's uh, like a restaurant or a club. Uh, they start uh, good with uh, their popular, and after that, <clears throat> they become regular one. And it's interesting that the government right now is following the trends, and uh, my colleagues and I, we would like that our colleagues, our governors, they participate not like people who. Um, is left back, but uh, like people who lead on others. So by now, uh, this is the best platform, the best venue for uh, opinion leaders uh, with a fast reaction. When uh, your content goes to Telegram, it goes directly to the users. We speak right now and our colleagues write about it. So right now, in this historical point, uh, Telegram has a great demand. Uh, Larissa, I would like to ask you, Nipa is a very strong university. Uh, you know, you have 42 governors who graduated from your university, and there are plenty of special programs on politics, on finance, on other issues. And as I know, almost in all the programs, you have a special module, special part on communications. Uh, uh, Eugene said that even the governors go to Telegram, they do the press conference in uh, contact, uh, they answer the questions of the citizens. So how do you prepare uh, your uh, state managers for communication? Probably there are some examples that you would like to share uh, about the ways of communicating in modern society, taking into consideration the trends to be successful uh, public servant. Well, how do we do it? We just explain how does it work because uh, people are the same. They need bread and they need uh, some, something to see spectacle. So uh, this bread is something that they get from their smartphone, and they also are looking for something very attractive, very interesting. Today there is no information deficit because I lived in times when uh, you, you you couldn't buy a book or find enough information. Now you have all the information you'd like to have uh, but there is a deficit of attention so the um, public servants have to go where the auditory is and uh, answer their questions people want something fast something interesting and something useful and that's what you get in the social networks and what else do they want they want emotions they want empathy and that's what all the social questions Questionaries uh, say. We've heard uh, Sofia Malevina presentation, and you saw the last uh, social, uh, sociology data empathy, respect, but you cannot have this in an official press release, so uh, if you are a governor, you can use a social network, you can write that it's a pity that the park is closing. Uh, by now we cannot meet and uh, I really care and it's a pity for me. Those are the instruments which help you to respond to the expectations of uh, auditory. Uh, 
Если вы продолжите писать официальный пресс релиз If you go on with the official press release and official websites, uh, it's like going away on the square and uh, read the latest news on the square. It's something that was done um, several uh, centuries ago. Each time has its own channels of communication. Uh, also, we have a theory of communications, and our colleagues, investigators, they say that we are living in an audiovisual uh, age, and we consume the information, we uh, take the information from images. That's why we all have Instagram. That's why the governor can stream through Instagram, explaining the road, the report preparing or some, some, some work that they are doing, so and there is no need to comment nothing. Nobody asked me what will follow Telegram. Uh, Telegram is fast, uh, is anonymous because we because nobody wants official information. We want insights. And Telegram responds these wishes, but now we see uh, another uh, demand and the demand of fact-checking people want truth. So uh, the winner will be the one who will give uh, interesting information, uh, f uh, do it fast and offer uh, fact-checking. So here is the government channel. They can offer 100% fact-checking and I believe that it's a good confirmation. Uh, you can trust those channels 100%. That's official information which goes from the government and then get back to check it in uh, other channels which give you more details, uh, give you the expertise, some analysis. And uh, Alisa explained us how do they uh, teach the modern communications, but I would like to ask another question. Russia is a uh, country of possibilities, and I know that uh, your foundation organized a new pilot event, uh, which uh, was first brought the last year for S uh, SMM specialists, for uh, media representatives, from television, from papers. And they were learning the last trend, so I would like to ask Vladimir, uh, what do you think about the final results of this program? Was it a success? Probably you can share some insights. What uh, did people learn and how do they use it today? And uh, whether uh, they are object of hunt from enterprises. Yeah. Good afternoon, everybody. I would like to say that we are uh, always in the in front of all in the, in the uh, of all those new technologies we are between the state the uh, main institution and executive, executive power and our objective is to create a new methodology we have to explain to those um, authorities what uh, can they use and how can they work to um, be modern to be up to date and uh, all our practices, we were introducing them through the education sphere. And in the field which we are talking about, all the education is uh, purely practical because uh, all the theory which uh, has to do with the functioning of the digital world um, has no sense because this digital world is uh, born right now, is forming right now, and uh, all the owners of big projects, uh, they started in their garage with uh, something small, without any special education. So we work on all kind of uh, courses for um, public servants and for executors, and that's very important because to implement the methodology you need uh, people uh, who know how to uh, manage this methodology.
and it is very important uh, for, the, for, for those who will do uh, this work in regions uh, to understand how does it work. Uh, I studied at, uh, I studied journalism at uh, State, Moscow State University, and there is no journalism as I was uh, taught. And we have uh, thousands and thousands of uh, persons with uh, who have this. Uh, Education, journalism education, they don't know what to do with this journalism education. And when it happened uh, during the last five years, it happened, and what, what, what was the trigger? Uh, people started to take more information from internet than from the media. Uh, internet gives you more money, and the traditional, conventional media they uh, are closing. So this is a question of uh, market, commercial market, because when we speak about conventional media, we see less potential. Even uh, if we speak about the income you can have um, working for Mail.ru, for Yandex, for other digital projects, you have much more possibilities and you have access to high technology, you can inform population, you can raise awareness, you can have uh, all extra services you need. So as I said, there are plenty of people who just doesn't know how to live in this new reality. Many of them continue working, but they understand that their work gives no feedback today, no positive feedback for them, uh, neither for the venues where, which are they are working for. So, uh, and uh, it's a hard thing because one thing is when you have people who work in uh, state system, public servants, uh, it's clear what to do with them. We have to explain them how to use those new instruments. And uh, many governors, as uh, our colleagues said, they are looking for people with those competences. They, uh, the, and the, the only thing they need is uh, to obtain new instruments timely uh, to accomplish with uh, their task and our task. But when it comes to a person who work in media, uh, it's another thing because in five years is not too much. And uh, they uh, now have to deal with the problems that ever since they learned uh, and that their dreams, their plans, which were based on a certain vision of the uh, job, uh, they vanished because of the new reality. So one of the main tasks that we've had was to uh, help them to understand what kind of use can have their uh, knowledge, their expertise in this new reality. It was one of the main tasks, and I believe that they are thinking about it, and many of them. Uh, cooperate with uh, those who are um, offering that course of education and they bring new projects which respond to the new demands of communication. And we have, uh, we have we've had another competition. Uh, uh, managers of communications, and oh, you know that soon we will have the top block prize, and uh, that competition. Um, does it show how those guys who took part in that competition uh, have changed or not? Because. Uh, as I understand, many of them have changed their career and what they do in their life. It's uh, hard for me to answer this question and I'll explain why, because the um, problem is uh, deeper. Why do we do this competition? We offer uh, for different uh, committees, departments, and uh, executive power, um, the way to find specialists uh, who respond to the uh, new time. And we cannot identify them 
after their graduation from the universities because there is no program for their uh, preparation. They uh, go, uh, go, go, go with the same programs as they've had during the last decade. Uh, Larissa does it. Larissa works for one month for 72 hours. Now I'm speaking about uh, fundamental education, uh, higher education, which is comparable with the uh, higher education that during decades uh, we're receiving the specialists in this, in this field. There is no Russian uh, university which uh, is um, teaching people from this new office. Uh, we see soci uh, sociology um, in a classic view, in a classic form, which do not offer you this competence. No, talking about digital uh, specialists, uh, normally people study at PR departments, uh, journalists, and then they can also work, but as for additional educational education, uh, they can also go there. But in our opinion, it's highly important. Uh, so instead of uh, additional initiatives such as uh, contests, uh, finding uh, such people, we have to change the education system. It has to be adapted to the audience's needs. And bearing in mind the pandemic and the popularity of education, the growing interest, the demand for digital uh, skills, uh, you know, we, we do have a number of universities uh, that train good specialists. And of course, digital uh, is uh, underrepresented uh, in the system of fundamental education. And digital education is directly related to practice. Uh, so we, need, we will have to attract not only universities, but also the employers who are supposed to help us uh, to give us practical help, and especially who work in commercial companies, so we are ready to participate in that. Therefore, I can say that uh, such uh, competitions are really useful, so as to demonstrate the society that uh, um, <clears throat> it is heated uh, because we are act here as a kind of a driver. So you must understand, you know, uh, should be understandable to customers. But in the meantime, we have to think about the system of education when we uh, train such specialists uh, before they enroll at universities. Yes, thank you. Dozens of people write to me how we can join the this uh, master class of new media. So wait for the news. We are going to tell you about this. Please follow uh, our uh, announcement. Announcements. It's, it's a really cool, you know, it's a great program. You can uh, get uh, the free education. Now, brief questions. Uh, uh, very uh, not much time left. Uh, so is uh, the state should uh, follow the modern trends using the contemporary channels of communication? Uh, should it uh, act in more conservative and uh, teach people how to get the necessary information, whether we are be f fed up with new media? And, um, and uh, probably we need classical, traditional uh, media. Is it a long-term trend or a short-term trend? So let's start with Larissa then. Uh, three questions. What does the state need uh, to follow the new trends and uh, new education, or should we uh, teach people how to find the uh, channels of information? So you mean to uh, have some people, you know, who will come out on the square to make announcements. Well, of course, you have to reach your audiences. That's the task of the speaker. So we should go where the audience is. Whether the people is going to be fed up with new media, do we need classical, traditional mass media? No, they're not going to die. The mass, uh, traditional mass media, whatever you think, whatever you say, the federal channels check and double check. in uh, 
uh, fact-checking of information. Yes, the editor-in-chief is responsible for the information. Whether they, we are going to be fed up with that, well, of course, uh, we will be fed up with that, but they are not going to be called new, and we will follow the new as just the new time, the newest time, the modern times, postmodern. So right now we do need them, but this is not forever. Evgeny, your opinion. First about the state and uh, telegram, uh, whether the state needs that. Uh, I quite agree with Vladimir because we uh, have trained specialists for many years and they realize that uh, then they realize that we have uh, trained them uh, not for the market that is uh, here now. Uh, I should tell you that it's not the state uh, that should follow this. We need to uh, set the trend. Uh, trendsetters, that's what we have to do. No doubt uh, the new uh, interlayer of uh, people, including the new leaders who join the big organizations and state corporations, they do need, they, they are supposed to know how to work in this uh, new environment. And the second question, if you remind me, are we going to be fed up with new media and whether the traditional mass media die? Uh, I don't think we're going to be fed up with them. Uh, at a certain point in time, of course, they cease to be called new media. But as for fact-checking that was mentioned here, the new in the new media, uh, the winners are those who write honestly and high-quality articles. So that's in addition to what Mikhail has just said, that, uh, that it should be useful, topical. Uh, yes, the new trend, that's right. As a Telegram channel, according to Telegram channel, such and such information. Uh, I remember Alexei Venediktov uh, said, um, he said that his uh, correspondents who are on air, uh, they had a list of uh, mass media. The green ones are those who can uh, trust 100%. Um, the yellow ones, 50-50, and the red ones, cannot be trusted. So my question is, how do you deal with the new uh, media? And the last question in this Blitz uh, questionnaire, TikTok and Telegram, is it short time or short-lived or long uh, time trend? If they're going to work uh, with press releases, that's a story about um, heralds, you know, uh, on the square. If uh, they start writing about what the audience want to know in the social media, uh, some uh, honest, uh, double-checked uh, story, but with emotions. I, I'm sure that is going to be a trend that is going to be strengthened. Mikhail, do you think that the state should follow the uh, fashionable trends, or uh, do we have to uh, teach the audience? I think. Uh, we uh, agree with the colleagues, um, uh, and I would like to subscribe to what Vladimir has said. So the state should be aware of all this. We shouldn't cease to study the new media, new opportunities in practice, uh, and also to follow and uh, keeping uh, our mm, hands, uh, so to say, on this trend. Um, I'm not from the mass media, but I would like to add uh, the marketing here as well and other types of communication. I think that's an important area of activity, especially for the state. The second question, are we going to be fed up with new media and, and uh, traditional SME, uh, mass media? Well, of course, it's a kind of a popular question, uh, and uh, we cannot uh, answer this uh, unambiguously. The telegraph died, but in the meantime, the bold pen is not uh, ousted, is not killed, and the pencil. So everything depends on whether it's going to find its use in the fast-changing world and among the fast-changing behavior. I'm talking about the new tools, and that will uh, actually affect uh, the mass media in the nearest time. But of course, some uh, channels will die, and, but others will find a unique niche 
uh, the radio has not uh, killed television. Uh, um, television has not killed radio, I'm uh, sorry. It still exists and is as, uh, even as a competitor. By the way, radio uh, every year is getting more popularity because it's a streaming service, uh, because people uh, buy cars and uh, they listen to radio. Not everyone has uh, hot keys and flash drives. And the last question, uh, the uh, TikTok Telegram, and uh, uh, is it a long-term trend or a short-lived one? Depends on two things. First, whether these channels uh, remain and whether they will be able to find in the niche, or is it just a popular, fashionable trend? And uh, the uh, another thing, and the other uh, question is whether they find the way to get ready in the right manner. It's not only regarding the content, but also the content that is capable of dealing with the tasks uh, faced by the state. And the last one, Vladimir Tabak, do you think that the state should follow the fashionable trend? Whether a person has to follow uh, the medical uh, trends and to check his health to make uh, to uh, medical checkups. It's the same question. The state can survive without quality information. Uh, we know a lot of cases when tragic uh, events took place uh, in different countries related to uh, uh, poor information agenda. Uh, that uh, has nothing to do with the social uh, situation uh, in the country. It's not a must-have, it's part of the uh, country's policy, uh, without which a state cannot exist. That's a question of stability and resilience, uh, first of all. You know, they're talking about traditional uh, mass media. And let me cite one example. There's been a quite uh, uh, um, an important bargain, a quite an important deal uh, made you know, um, Atletico was uh, taken over, was bought by the Wall Street Journal. Wall Street Journal is a classical mass media uh, that has been uh, operating since 1851 and it's been changing all the time from a single uh, bulletin uh, sheet of paper to uh, a classical mass media. So, so it's, it's a very uh, broad definition, a traditional classical uh, mass media. Talking about of newspapers and television, we don't know whether the channels in Telegram survive because Telegram itself may die, uh, may be extinct in a certain time in the future. There are certain formats liked by the people, and there is content. Contact is, content is number one. Those who know how to make uh, quality content their mass media will always survive, will always live. As an example of one of the uh, masters, uh, Roman Gabrielian, who started with the uh, newspaper in Ulyanovsk, then a federal newspaper. So the, now he entered the top trends, you know. That's right. At that time, they could be called uh, traditional uh, mass media. Today, we are also kind of a uh, traditional. And the last question about TikTok or Telegram, is it short-lived or long-term? Uh, but that's a question uh, whether the TikTok and Telegram are uh, for many years. So you've cited an example of Clubhouse. Is there any sense to talk about the uh, prospects for uh, authority channels in Clubhouse? No, there is no chance for them there. Today, no doubt, both uh, channels show turbulent growth and uh, the involvement uh, in TikTok uh, content is one of the highest. It's the fastest growing uh, channel in the country. And then if the state uh, will uh, be defeated, will lose if they don't use these new uh, channels. Um, so, the, so the question is as follows, whether the state needs 
to uh, <clears throat> appear, to show up on the most popular channels. Yes, that's right. Uh, the last stories of classical stories, the interaction between the state and YouTube. I've been working in this area for a long time already, so uh, I remember the time when YouTube was only developing in Russia. I'm not talking about the stay in a broad sense of the word, uh, uh, but um, yeah, well, people thought that YouTube at that time sought is some kind of uh, experimental venue, experimental channel watched by uh, school uh, uh, school children. So, but uh, then a whole generation of new people grew up with good uh, audience and good salaries. And today they are absolutely independent, and uh, that's why YouTube, uh, from the ideological point of view, is an instrument that we've lost. Uh, but uh, last year we had the YouTube refresh. Well, dear colleagues, thank you very much. I believe that we could stay here for three hours more uh, without discussion. I would like to thank Larisa Katasheva uh, from Renipa, Evgeny Jonov uh, from uh, uh, scientific and educational politic representative of Anna Dialog, Mikhail Shumakov, uh, and the national priorities. Uh, Center, congratulations, I wish you only good news. Thank you very much. <laughs>